Welcome back to our Eclipse Chapter Recap Series. Up next, we continue our little Cliff Notes version right here on Clever TV. Hello, Twihards. I'm Jocelyn Davis, and today we'll cover Chapter 8 of Eclipse, Temper. This chapter opens at the beach with Jake and Bella wandering around. Jake's sort of gloating about helping Bella make her escape. In fact, he's sort of hoping that everyone will have to come looking for her. She knows that they're going to be really mad, so Jake halfway seriously suggests that she just stay there with him. Bella attempts to make some small talk and asks him if there are any scandals going down in the pack. Suddenly though, Jake gets really quiet and serious. Even though Bella was just joking around, it seems like there might be something touchy about this subject. Finally, Bella just asks what the problem is. Jake says that Quill imprinted. He's the third one and it's obvious that he's worried about imprinting himself. Also, just a reminder, imprinting is something that only the wolf pack members can do. It's basically like love at first sight when they find their soulmate, but it's a little bit more intense. So after this, Bella and Jacob just walk along hand in hand on the beach. Bella knew that they probably looked like a couple, but she didn't really care. So she decided to ask a little bit more about Quill's imprinting. Then after a bit, Jake gives in and gives Bella the shocking news. Quill imprinted on Emily's niece. Sounds okay, right? That is until Bella finds out that Claire, Emily's niece, is only two years old. Wow, talk about weird and unexpected. Bella can't even hide her shock. Jake reminds her that this is all a part of the legend that they'd all heard before, and now it's coming to life. This is a tough one for Bella, and she's trying her hardest to not be totally creeped out by the whole thing. Jake explains that this imprinting isn't romantic at all, and he knows because he can basically see through Quill's eyes. Plus, Quill can't help it. Now it's like a big brother relationship, and someday it would become a friendship, and then maybe even later they would become the perfect match. Bella asks a sort of obvious question about when it will happen to him, and Jake says, never. Jake responds that the imprinting happens when you see the person, but he explains that he never sees anyone else, he just sees her. Uh-oh, awkward moment. Bella tries to duck out, saying maybe she should go home, but of course Jake protests really quickly. Jacob apologizes and tries to just get back to being himself, but Bella still feels bad. He suggests that maybe they should go for a motorcycle ride, even though Bella tells him that she is not allowed. After some big protests though, Bella finally gives in. They ride around and then grab some food. It's really normal, just like the old days of Jake and Bella hanging out. The duo is having a great time when they start reminiscing about Valentine's Day. It seems like it was years ago. So much had changed since then, including the fact that Charlie and Bella were sort of not getting along. After a bit, Jacob says that he has a question. He wants to know if she was really mad at him, or was she really just being stubborn about the question of it not being his business if Edward bit her. She says that yes, it wasn't his business. And this brings up the treaty once again. If Edward or someone else changes another human, the treaty will be broken. But Bella reminds him that he already broke the treaty by telling her about the vampires. Hmm. Jacob mentions that the war is coming. He says that if she is changed, his friend will be gone. And Bella asks if this meeting will be their goodbye. She then breaks the news to him that she only has a few weeks left of being human. Then Jacob almost totally loses it. His body is overtaken with anger and his soda actually explodes. Jacob can barely handle this news. She only has weeks of human time left. Bella tries to explain the situation and Jacob says the unthinkable, that he wishes she were dead instead of a vampire. This is when Bella loses it, saying maybe he'll get lucky and she'll get hit by a truck or something. Bella makes her escape to the Cullens house. Of course, Alice is already waiting for her when she gets there, trying to comfort her, although Bella is still really upset. So she falls asleep and is suddenly awakened by Edward's return. She expects him to be mad, and she expects to be mad herself, but of course that doesn't happen. Instead, Bella reaches out to kiss him. Edward jokingly says that, hey, maybe he should get her mad more often. So their little love fest continues, but this time things get a little more serious. Let's just say that the sparks are seriously flying and Bella is definitely okay with it. She even asks if he's changed his mind about you know what, and maybe that's why he got the bed for her. 
Edward says no, that they wouldn't be, as he puts it, getting carried away. After a bit, Bella asks if he found any mountain lions and says that being taken hostage wasn't so bad. And Edward says that he isn't even mad at her for going to see Jacob. Okay, so now Bella is super confused and totally not understanding why he's not upset. He's suddenly become the most tolerant vampire boyfriend ever. He says that he's going to start trusting her judgment and says that he won't let her friendship with Jacob push a wedge between them. So cute. Edward asks if she'll be going back and she slowly says no, saying that she doesn't think she'll be welcome. Edward is obviously super curious, but trying to play it off a bit. So she quickly explains the situation and tells him that Jacob said that he'd rather see her dead than a vampire. Edward reacts quietly and then surprisingly, he consoles her, saying that he doesn't like to see her upset. Then Bella mentions something else she wants to talk to Edward about, Rosalie. Edward says that he knows Rose was thinking about it when he got home. He seems a bit anxious, probably wondering if Rose had convinced her to stay human. Instead though, Bella brings up Denali and the lady vampires up there. Bella wants to know if any of them liked him, and Edward doesn't really answer. Finally, Bee just says that Alice will tell her and that she's going to go get the scoop right now. Edward seems very serious and finally gives in, saying that Tanya was interested in him. Then Bella wants to know what Tanya looks like. He brushes it off a bit, but Bella pushes to find out if she's beautiful. Of course, Edward, being the super boyfriend, says that he prefers brunettes and that Tanya is a blonde, totally not his thing. Edward seems to like this jealous Bella. Edward tries to get her to sleep, saying that she is the only one who's ever had his heart. And with that little tidbit, Bella gives in, drifting off to sleep. They are so obsessed with each other, it's sickeningly perfect. Anyways guys, here's your question for chapter eight. At this point in the story, do you think that Jake still thinks he has a chance of imprinting on Bella, or does he believe he's destined for a life of loneliness? Give us your in-depth answer in the comments section below. And make sure to keep coming back here every single Saturday for your next Eclipse recap. I'm Jocelyn Davis, thanks for watching.